Hello friends. It's great to be back with another episode of Timeless Words of Wisdom. And we are now in episode 11. Today we are talking about loving yourself. Hmm. Where have you heard that in the Bible? Actually, it is there in a in a verse that says love your neighbor as yourself. Now, where in the Bible do you know that? Verse you can find it in Mark 12:31. Let's read it. It says the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now tell me, does it mean you're supposed to love your neighbor more than yourself? No. The same as yourself. Oh yes, there are many people who love themselves more than others. So, what are the signs that somebody loves themselves more than others? They're always making other people do things for them. Hmm? Or they are always making other people uh, give up their preferences to do what they want. I'm not talking about that. Uh, today we want to talk about loving yourself. And I'm actually addressing this to those who actually love themselves less than they love the others. Yes, it is possible. If you've been through a hard time in your life or had a difficult childhood or been through trauma, difficult life experiences, then it is somewhat natural that you learn to think of yourself as not important. You learn to treat yourself the way you've been treated by someone else. So you tend to keep the other people in your life on such a pedestal that you look down on yourself. This is something that's learned learned through the experiences in your life. So this is why it is important that we learn to love ourselves. Now, for example, if somebody gave you a gift and you love that person, you will take care of that gift. You cherish that gift, right? Yeah. The truth is, God gave you a gift. And that gift was you. That gift was you, or rather is you. The first thing he gave you is life. The second thing he gave you is you, the way he created you. He made you unique and different and you are a gift. And you have to receive that gift. You have to cherish that gift. You have to love that gift, which is you. And yes, all of us are not born knowing who we are. We tend to depend on other people to tell us who we are, to figure out who we are. But if you've been in a situation where nobody is really interested in you or your well-being, they're just going about life and treating you as though you're some furniture, then it's quite likely you will not know yourself. But then, there are ways of finding out who you are. There are ways of doing that. Find out what you like in life. Find out if you have a leaning towards uh, music, art, dance, drama, studies, reading. Maybe you love some particular subject, physics, mathematics, anything. Find out what you like. Find out what puts joy in your heart. Maybe you love animals. Maybe you love nature. Maybe you love traveling. Maybe, maybe there's a whole lot of maybes. Find out who you are. And try and understand that God loves you. He's given you a gift. That gift is you. And there's something good in it. Remember, when God created everything, he said it's good. And you are good. So what do we do? How do we take care of this gift that he's given us? We learn to love ourselves. We learn to take care of our needs. 
we learn to protect our interests, do what's right for us. Yes, it is good to also think about doing what's right for us in such a way that it's not wrong for somebody else. That's that's being fair. Hmm? So we learn to be a good steward of who we are. And that includes even our mind, our body, and our heart. We have to guard our heart. If you have a good heart, it's quite possible that you've been through a lot of betrayal. It's quite possible that you've been through a lot of bad experiences because you tend to go out of the way to do good to others, but it doesn't come back to you. So you have to learn to guard your heart, your spirit too, because when bad things happen, it is natural for us to lose heart and even our spirit suffers. But just like David encouraged himself, he kept himself going, he lifted himself out of that place where he could have gone down depressed, in despair, but no, he encouraged himself. And he looked to God and he looked to God's goodness and did it for himself. And being a good steward also means every gift, talent that God has given you, use it. Develop it. Do something with it. Don't hide it. Being a good steward of yourself also means protecting yourself from addictions protecting yourself from anything that's self-destructive and also bad company because a lot of addictions actually people get addicted because somebody introduces them to that addictive stuff now would you think that the person who introduces you to something that's going to destroy you is good for you No. So you also have to protect yourself from people who do not have your interest in mind and who don't care whether you're healthy, you're fine or safe. So that means putting boundaries, boundaries around yourself. Boundaries that protect you from whatever is not good for you and not safe for you. And it's also important that you acknowledge who you are. Acknowledge that you're good. And build on from there. Even if nobody else is doing that for you, you take some time out to figure it out for yourself. Who am I? What is my purpose in life? What is the reason why I'm living? What do I want my life to count for? What do I want to do with this lifetime? You get one shot of life. What are you going to do with it? Pay attention to your dreams. Pay attention to your desires. After all, this is a relationship which you will have for the rest of your life. From the first moment you took a breath, to the last moment when you breathe your last breath but you live exactly the number of moments only with you from the first breath to the last breath this is a lifelong truly lifelong relationship so you learn to love yourself let's look at Proverbs chapter 8 Verses 35 and 36. It says, For whoever finds me, which is wisdom, finds life and draws forth and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who misses me or sins against me, wrongs and injures himself, all who hate me love and court death. That's a heavy verse, isn't it? Whoever finds wisdom, 
finds life. And whoever goes against it, they sin against themselves, they injure themselves, or they love and court death. They love and court death. What does that mean? They are doing something that will bring death to them. It may not happen in one minute. Ah, it can happen in one minute too. If you are breaking the traffic rules and you are driving against the uh, current, I mean the people are coming this way, you are breaking it. You are setting yourself up for an accident. And some accidents can take your life. So, people who are breaking those laws, laws of life, laws of uh, society, they are often setting themselves up for something that would harm them or cause them grief or loss. So, wisdom teaches us to care for ourselves, to live a good life. Let's see something more. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 12. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. If you scorn, you alone will bear it and pay the penalty. Now, if you do something wrong, do you think somebody else will suffer because of it? Mm -hmm, it's you. You will suffer because of that, which you do. You bear the brunt of it. If you take care of yourself, if you plan things out, take control of yourself, take control of whatever needs to be taken control of, then you can have a better life. Let's also look at Proverbs 19, verse 8. He who gains wisdom loves his own life. Aha! Loves his own life. He who keeps understanding shall prosper and find good. Now who wants to prosper? Do you? Then find wisdom. Do you want something good to come to you? Find wisdom. And here again, if you love your life, if you love you and your life, gain wisdom. Isn't it? So the best way to love yourself is to gain wisdom and find all the wise ways of living. There are principles. Just like gravity, there are principles that govern life. Follow the wisdom of those principles. Do what's best for you. Now let's look at Proverbs 24, 3-6. I'm reading from the Amplified once again. It says, Through skillful and godly wisdom, is a house, a life, a home, a family built. And by understanding, it is established on a sound and good foundation. And by knowledge, shall its chambers of every area be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong, and better than a strong man. And a man of knowledge increases and strengthens his power. For by wise counsel, you can wage your war. And in an abundance of counsellors, there is victory and safety. Now, what did you understand from this? If you want to have a good life, a good home, a good family, then seek wisdom. If you want to have a life filled with precious and pleasant riches, 
have a good foundation for your life. Seek wisdom. So if you really want to love yourself, seek wisdom. Live by the principles of wisdom. Godly wisdom, not worldly wisdom. Worldly wisdom says, go after riches, go after fame, go after this and that and material stuff. And people spend their whole lifetime building that at the cost of everything else. And then what happens? They reach the pinnacle of their career, pinnacle of everything, and then realize that it's all empty. It's all vanity. There's something known as an under-27 club of celebrities who didn't cross 27. Very successful celebrities who made a mark for themselves at a very young age, became very rich, very famous, very popular, left a mark in their area of uh, work, but they found they couldn't go on for some reason or the other. They took their life. This is why the books of wisdom in the Bible says vanity. This is all vanity. You can spend your whole life doing something and then at the end of it all, you realize you got everything you wanted but you still feel empty inside. What is the antidote to that? The antidote to that is to seek godly wisdom. God's wisdom. He who created you gave you the best gift of all. He gave you life and gave you yourself and that gift is inside you. Just as we open a gift, unwrap it to see what's inside, take out the gift wrapping, see what's inside. You have to open up the gift wrapping and search who you are inside. Who are you inside? Do you know? Take some time to find out. And don't depend on anybody else. Mm -hmm. If the people around you are genuine and sincere, they will mirror the right things to you. And they will even tell you your faults. But if they are not genuine and they are not sincere, they will mirror the wrong things to you or say something that will take you down the wrong track. So it is important that you learn to find these things for yourself without relying on anyone else. Because all said and done, you're going to live the rest of your life with yourself. So you have to learn to trust yourself too. You have to learn to trust yourself. Yeah, you may have made mistakes. Who doesn't? The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now what does that mean? Every single person living on this planet at any point in time has done something wrong. So anybody who thinks or tries to look like or portrays that they are perfect, isn't. Don't fall for it. And you are not too. So give yourself some grace. Give yourself some room to breathe, to grow. And become all that you can be. Learn from your mistakes. God wouldn't be so hard on you. No, he wouldn't. Anybody who did anything wrong, if they turn to God and say, Lord, I am so sorry, I didn't know this, or I did this, but I realize now that it was the wrong thing to do. I, I'm sorry I did this. If you go back to God and say that, he'll forgive you. And when he forgives you, he'll wipe the slate clean. It doesn't mean you go back and do that again. Huh? But you get another chance to do what's right. 
and never turn back to those old ways. God knows what you struggle with and He cares. So you love yourself, you work on those areas where you are weak or you feel you have shortcomings or you've done something wrong. Make amends. Change your mind about those things. Turn around. Find out what's better to do. And seek that path which will lead you to being a fulfilled person, satisfied person, happy person who takes care of himself or herself. Do it. Mark this day in the calendar. And from today, find out, every day find out something about yourself and see how you can work on it. Make yourself better. So that when you finish your time on earth, this time that you spend on earth will count for something. You know, there are millions of people who lived and went, but nobody knows anything about them. You can change that about you, right? You don't want to be a statistic. You want to be a person. Be a person. Live a full life. Love yourself. Learn about yourself. Learn from your mistakes. Oh, learn from the mistakes of others too. And do justice to this life that God gave you, to the self that God gave you. There may be some very unique gift in you which nobody else knows about. Mm -hmm. And because they don't know about it, they will not find it. And they won't tell you anything about it, right? But if you find it, use it. Use it. Build it. And let it learn, learn to use it as a blessing for others too. You can do that. If God has given you that gift, it means that He trusts you to be able to use it well. Yes, there are some things that can be used for good and that can be used for evil too. If you use it for evil, you'll have to bear the consequences. But just like the verses on wisdom we read, if you use it for good, it will turn out to be a blessing for you. And lifelong, you will not have any regrets for the way you, you lived and the way you used your gifts. Not only that, later generations will remember you for that, which you have done using those gifts. Isn't that something wonderful? So, dear friends, I hope that you will choose to do what's right for you. You will think about what you should do, which is good for you. You take care of yourself, love yourself, and live a better life than you've ever lived before. I pray that you manage to find that gift that God has given you and that you bring it out to the fore in such a way that it will bless you and bless many, many other people in this generation and in the future generations. Yes, you're going to be somebody's grandmother, grand, great-grandfather. Who knows? You want them to remember you well, right? So live well now. Make that difference now. Make that change now, starting today. I'll leave you all these things to think about and I'll see you again in the next episode of Timeless Words of Wisdom. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. See you.